Hi, welcome to today's Daily Dose of Amuna. So today we're going to talk about something that um, is asked about and I receive various requests from women around the world to have more clarity and understanding over the idea of Amuna, trust, bitachon, hishtadlut, where does the concerted effort begin? Where does Amuna end? And what is the balance between the two? And so our Chachamim teach us that essentially the greater that one has and heightens their Amuna, the less um, Hishtadlut, the less effort and investment of time that person needs to put into that particular thing or subject or idea that um, that they have Amuna in. So in other words, Amuna essentially widens, um, I would say it widens the vessel um, by which Hashem pours in the abundance, uh, Hashem pours in His intervention. The more we believe in that, the less we need to physically do in order to bring about the results. And there's a story that's told down actually by Reb Zusha. Reb Zusha from Annapoli, the famous um, two brothers, Reb Elimelech from Lizanj, uh, Lizanj uh, and uh, Reb Zusha from Annapoli, which we have the suit to go and visit his kever, Be'ezrat Hashem, when we're in the Ukraine. So Reb Zusha at one point was stricken with um, very bad um, poverty. In fact, he went a few days without a morsel of food being put into his mouth. And his disciples begged him, please, you have to do something. You have to do something, some form of hishtadlut, uh, some form of hishtadlut to be able to um, enable uh, you, you to be able to sustain yourself through life. And essentially, Rab Zusha went ahead, got himself up, and um, made his way to the home, a beautiful mansion of a well-known phil philanthropist. And he takes his, his hands and he does a couple of thumps, barely to be audible by any human being, and walks away. And his disciples, very awe-stricken over this level of hishtadlut, um, that Reb Zusha had essentially declared, um, said that's not really considered hishtadlut. But um, after a day or so, this phil philanthropist found his way to the shul and essentially brought with him gifts, money, and the essentials that uh, Reb Zusha and his disciples needed in order to get through um, their difficulties. So we see here that just the slightest effort um, that he extended towards his well-being. Now, again, we're not on that level. Um, uh, unfortunately, many of us are not on that level. But it's important for us to understand that with that level of amuna. It is possible to get by with very minimal amount of uh, concerted effort in order to bring about the desired results. And I want to refer now to one or two sources that bring down to what extent does it mean to have bitachon and trust in Hashem in assuming that God willing our needs or that which we pray for or have a muna in will actually bring about a, um, a result in, in the reality. And so the Toldot uh, Yaakov Yosef, which is the foremost Talmi disciple of the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh, brings down in the name of the Rambam, he writes that if our bitachon in Hashem was strong enough, then we would have the schut, we would merit to actually see the man come down from Shemaim in order to sustain us and provide us with all of our essential needs. And he cites the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh on the Pasuk, HaBoteach BaHashem Chesed Yisov Venu, He who trusts in Hashem will be surrounded by kindness. And the Toldot says that if a person 
trusts in Hashem in such an elevated, perfected manner, then Hashem, the angels of Hashem, would actually watch every single footstep of this person and nothing bad would ever come to him. In other words, he would have all of his needs met and he wouldn't have to put in um, as much effort as he is accustomed to have uh, been doing till then. What we really understand from this, and many of us have the question, well, what does it mean that we have a trust, an elevated trust in Hashem that He's going to provide for us? I mean, what if I don't deserve it? What if I'm not supposed to um, essentially uh, get that which I anticip anticipate and trust in Hashem? What do I do then? I'm trusting in something, assuming that Hashem is going to give me something, but what if I don't deserve it? What if it's not, so to speak, written in the cards for me to get? And so here, the level of understanding of emuna and bitachon and trust in Hashem is explained in one relatively simple idea. We have to have faith that Hashem essentially is able to and can help us even when the situation looks hopeless. In other words, our Bitachon, our trust in Hashem, is not about whether or not we're, we're, we're not supposed to do divine calculations as to whether or not we deserve it or should get it or, you know, it's in the cards for us, so to speak. The Bitachon, the trust, is that Hashem is able to and can give to us all that we need. And that's where our Amuna. And our bitachon basically lies. And if a person trusts that Hashem will essentially provide, can provide, is able to provide, he, he is hakol yachol, he could do anything, then that is essentially the vessel that opens up to all possibilities, that anything can come about. And the divine and the 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 um, Hazon Ish brings down to strengthen the words of the Toldot Yaakov Yosef, and he says, "If a person trusts in Hashem, a divine spirit rests upon him, and a spirit of might accompanies him, assuring him that Hashem will surely." help him. In other words, it's all about us saying that we trust Hashem. The minute we say that we trust Hashem, we have opened and expanded our vessel. And essentially through that, so to speak, minor act, we're essentially opening up the vessel for all possibilities to come through. And the more we have that emuna and profess our trust in Hashem by knowing by acting in such a way that we really know that anything can happen against all logic and explanation. Hashem could do anything, is capable of doing everything and anything, then that is the level of trust and amuna that Hashem expects, instructs, and requires of us in order to make things happen for us. And, and that minimizes, essentially, the amount of effort that we put into it because our effort is really in working on our trust. Again, we need to do. We are in a world of doing. We can't just sit back and not do. But the amount of how much we do is greatly um, attached to how much emuna and bitachon, how emotionally calm and trust trusting we are that Hashem is going to provide us all that we need. So Be'ezrat Hashem, let's remember that the next time that we also need to knock on someone's door. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we can uh, tippy-toe our way to the same level of Reb Zusha, who, by the way, all of our sages have left in their, um, in their limelight this beauty, this ability to attach to their um, goodness and their levels as well. So I'm wishing everybody an Amuna-filled happy day.